Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 63 of the Nordcast and episode number 11 of the Nord and Block Pod. Yes, that is right. We are doing a crossover episode between the Nordic Network Podcast. Yes, I'm calling it the Nordic Network Podcast because I'm on two goddamn podcasts, so it's my network, all right? Um, So it's basically just the crew from the Nord and Block Pod and the Nordcast, which is just LeBlock added in. Uh, I'm your host, Nordic, joined with Carter. How are we doing, Carter? Very tired. That's all I have to say. I figured we we, not, we might not hear a lot from Carter tonight. With Jack, a who a certified hooper who only stays in one spot on the court. How we doing, Jack? That's right. Doing good. <clears throat> Jack's office, and then we're also joined here with the Nord Block guest in LeBlock. Yakum Chuck, how we doing? We doing good. I love me some Yakum Chuck. That's great. All right, so we brought the four gangs here, or the four people, and the two podcasts. I'm doing this horribly. We brought the two podcasts here today to reveal our top 10 players from each position. So this should be a very interesting list. Um, All four of us have our different lists here. I have been looking forward to this for a while. This is our first instance of doing something like this. Uh, So without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. So we got goalies defensemen, wingers, just combined, not left or right, centers, and mascots at the end. Uh, So it should be a very fun uh, episode here for you guys. So we're going to start off with goalies, uh, the goaltending list. We're going to go, basically how we're going to do this is I'm going to say my number 10, Carter's going to say his number 10, Jack's going to say his number 10, LeBlanc's going to say his number 10, and then we'll kind of discuss in between on if we think guys are too high or too low or whatever. So, yeah, um. Without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So at number 10 uh, for my list, and it, it's 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 really difficult for me to rank, by the way. I'm going to say this as a disclaimer. I probably know that I'm forgetting someone on one of my lists. Yeah, I'm same. Gonna realize it. <laughs> I'm going to realize it halfway through my list uh, when you guys say them. Um, but at number 10, he has dropped off a lot recently. I have Andre Vasilevsky. Now, again, the criteria for, for this, I for, should have said this at first, is 60% this season and then 40% the last two seasons. So I guess it's mainly based off of this past year, but there is some factors into previous years as as well. But Vazzy um, had an injured year this past season, kind of looked like a down season from him. Um, Obviously lost in the first round this past year. He looked good, but still not like one of the best goalies in recent years. Um, If you include the last couple of years, he does have that final thrown in there. But regardless, uh, I have Vazzy at 10. So, Carter, who is your number 10 goalie? So, my number 10 goalie is a guy who got kind of taken out of the starter role this year um, after being probably, well, not probably, the best goalie the year before. Uh, And I got Linus Ulmer uh, as my number 10. Wow. Jack, who do you have at number 10? Number 10, I have Alexander Georgiev. LeBlanc, who is your number 10? Number 10, I got Anthony Stola. No, I'm just kidding. I oh, have, right. oh I, my I, God. Wow. I got, I got uh... nope. <laughs> God, he... No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, LeBlanc just glitched out midway through. We'll be right back. That's what... So, LeBlanc. Sorry. So, LeBlanc glitched out. Uh, LeBlanc is back. Um, LeBlanc, who is your number 10? My number 10 is Linus Olmark. I guess he I guess he um learned to not mess with uh Anthony Stolar's lore. Um, but so Carter and LeBlanc both have Olmark at 10. Why is that, guys? I well, still oh I'll let the Sens fan go because he's on his yeah, team. He knows, he knows. I, I, I still feel like Linus Olmark is a top 10 like caliber goalie, but I do think he did lose a step. This year, losing his job to Jeremy Swayman. Um, but he's still, like, he just won the Vesna last season. So, you said it's based off of last season's and this season. So, based off of the Vesna winning season, I'd say he's still top 10. Okay. Jack, why is why is Georgiev in your top 10? Georgiev just, I don't know. The thing is, he, I pulled this, like, from a lot of lists and stuff, and he was a pretty common number 10, honestly. So, <clears throat> um. You know, the Avalanche have a good decor, and I feel like he he still, like, does a lot of work, but I feel like, you know, he's got a good team around him, uh, solid goalie still, but 
just just better options. Yeah. All right, moving into number nine, I actually have Lena Solmark at my number nine. Carter, who's your number nine? My number nine. That's a great question. Uh, I got the guy who replaced Lena Solmark, uh, Jeremy Swayman. Ooh. Jack, who's your number nine? I have Swayman at number nine. And LeBlanc? I have Andre Basilevsky at number nine. Okay. Um, My main question here is for Carter and Jack. I'll let, let Carter answer this first. Carter, why why do you guys have Swayman so low on your list? Because I have Swayman way higher. Well, that, I know. I, I, I 100% see that. But I know we're taking 60% this year. Don't get me wrong. He was amazing. Last year, he did split time. The year before, he didn't start. True. Yeah, I think you got it. You got because yeah. if we were taking this year into account, no doubt he's way higher on my list. That's true. But we got to take the previous two years into account. He's a starter last year. We're not having this conversation. He's up higher. This is done. But we got to take the last two years into account before this season. So that's why he's going to be a little lower on mine. Yeah, you you have a good point. Actually, I agree with that. Uh, number eight, I have Ilya Sorokin. Um, Carter, who's your number eight? I keep turning off my phone. God damn. It. Uh, I got Jake Ottinger. Okay. Jack, who's your number eight? I got Vasilevsky. Ooh. And LeBlanc? Sergei Bobrovsky. Wow. Okay. So, LeBlanc, um, you are the outlier here. Well, there's a few outliers, but LeBlanc, why is Bob at number eight on your list after winning the Stanley Cup? I, I, I get he just won the Stanley Cup, and I don't want to discredit, take that away from him. But you look at the past, like I said, the past two years, like he's been elite. He's elite this year, elite last year's playoffs, but the past two seasons, he's been okay. Like, he hasn't been amazing, but he hasn't been, like, bad. He's just been, like, he's been above average, so I say he's an above average goaltender, so he's going to go at number eight on my list. That's fair. Um, Carter, you had – I'm blanking. Carter, who'd you Otter. have? What do you have Otter at? Eight, right? Eight? Yeah. He's a top goalie, but – I don't know. I don't think that he's – I don't think I'd – like, youth-wise, like, of course, I'd take him over some of the goalies I have on this list. But as far as for what he's kind of put up lately, he's kind of – for what we expect out of him to what he's kind of shown, it's it's been a little under underwhelming. Like, when I when I hear Jake Onger, it's he's a top five goalie. He's a top three goalie in the league. Like, don't get me wrong, when he's on, he's on, but there's times where he's not on, and you can kind of clearly see that. I think we saw that in the playoffs this year where he was expected to steal the show at Edmonton, and he didn't. So there's times where he can steal the show. There's times where he can't. I do do agree with that. I feel like there were times in these playoffs, and even during the regular season, where he did look uh, very on and off at points. So I I can get behind that. Uh, Number seven is actually, ironically for me, Jake Godinger. Uh, Carter, who's your seven? Uh, my seven is Sergey uh, Va- or Andre Vasilevsky. Sorry. Uh, and Jack, who's your seven? I got Sorokin. Okay, and LeBlanc. You see Soros. Wow, Soros at seven. Why is that? I just think one of them is better. I'm. I'm not, oh, I okay. Just, All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't have an in-depth analysis on this one. I'm not gonna lie. It's very close <laughs> between. My five, six, and seven, they just fell the way they are. My top four is like clear tier above my set uh six, uh seven and five. Yeah, I th- I would say like my my five, six, seven is pretty interchangeable as well. Um, number six, I got Thatcher Demko. Carter? Yeah, number six, I also have Thatcher. Jack? Six, I got Saros. Ooh. And LeBlanc? Six, I have Jake Ottinger. Okay. All right. So I have Demko. I'll I'll take the lead here with Demko for Carter. Um. So Demko, I feel like there are going to be people who watch this and kind of complain a little bit because Demko is a little too low, people would say. How I'm going to argue that is because Demko did have a really good year this year. I'm not going to deny that whatsoever. Last year was a really rough year, though. Last year was a really bad year for him. Um. I do also think that the team in front of Demko – did play pretty good too. That definitely plays a factor in it as well. Um, but I would say that because of the really bad year before, it does kind of make me a little bit hesitant to put Demko into the top five. So that's kind of my reasoning. Uh, number five, I have Jeremy Swayman. Carter? Number five. Number five, I got Ilya Sorokin. Okay. Jack? I got Bobrovsky. And LeBlanc? I also have Jeremy Swayman. 
Ooh. All right. So, Carter, I'll go to you. Why do you have Sorokin at five? We've been kind of lower on Sorokin. I think you're the highest one on him. Fine. Um, this year he kind of really carried the Islanders, in my opinion. I think he was their best. He was their best player, and he was the goaltender. Like I don't, I don't, I think you take Ilya Sorokin out of that, out of that team, and I don't, I don't think we're looking at a playoff team because they made playoffs this year, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I felt, I felt like though, I felt like he got the job stolen from him at the end of the season and in the playoffs. Was it? But, but I, I guess if you're factoring in the other seasons, I guess it does make sense. I am factoring in the other seasons where he, he still carried them. Like, yeah, the yeah, I, the Islanders a, have been a mediocre team, and he's kind of propelled them into that consistent almost playoff spot or playoff spot. Um, yeah. That's fair. LeBlanc, why are we higher on Swayman than the other people? Um, I'll let you answer this. He's my Alaskan beauty. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, I think Swayman had an outstanding year and he had an outstanding playoff set. You know, we all just, I think we all go down and say, wow, this is, and this is the reason why Linus Allmark is now an Ottawa Senator. Very true. He I stole think he stole the job from the reigning Vesna Trophy winner. I'm gonna give props to that all day long. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. Number four, I have Sergey Bobrovsky. Carter. Number four, I also have Sergey Bobrovsky. And Jack. Four, I got Shesterkin. And LeBlanc. Four, I have Ilya Sorokin. Ooh. Okay. All right. So I was wrong. LeBlanc's higher on Sorokin than all of us. Um, I get just with four people, I can't keep track. Um, Carter, I believe we both have the same person. Why why are we so high on Bob? Is it because of the cup and the carrying in the last two seasons in the playoffs? Is that why? Yeah, like I get it. His his first, like if because we're factoring in the last three, the first of that three was not very good. The second of that last three also wasn't very good, but then he switched it on in playoffs and he carried them to a cup final. He did the same thing this year. He picked up exactly where he left off. Regular season and cup final as well, and cup run. So, so. Kind of forget that he did, like, absolutely spectacular. Uh, Jack, you have Shesterkin at four. You're the first to mention Shesterkin so far on this list. Why is Shesterkin lower than probably the rest of us here? I, You know, I think there's there's three better goalies than him, uh, and obviously we'll get there. But, yeah, obviously four is still a very good position. Uh, Shesterkin's a great goalie. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think – he will be number one on this list eventually, however. So that's fair. Uh, so moving into the top three, number three, I have who say Soros Carter, who's your three? Also Soros. Damn. Man, we're we're green a lot here. Jax, who's who's your three? I got Demko. All right, and LeBlanc. I also have Demko. Ooh, so we're we're completely split here. So me and Carter got Soros. They got Demko. I that's interesting because. I'm a little lower ranked on Demko. Dem Carter, have you said Demko yet on your list? Yeah, I did. Okay. All right, so we're a little lower on Demko. LeBlanc, why are you – and Jack, I'll let you speak for Jack here. Why are you higher on Demko? So you look at this year, and Demko just had an amazing year. But you look at last season, you'd say, yeah, he had a bad season. He was also injured the entire season. It's true. I'm not going to factor in when a guy is playing injured or when a guy is out for a long period of time and comes back. But you look at the season before that, he had a great year. Season before that one, he also had a great year. So I think Demko, when he's healthy, he can be a top three goalie. That's fair. I can I can get behind that for sure. All right, number two, I have Connor Hellebuck. Carter, who's your number two? He's also got Connor Hellebuck. Look at that. Jack, who's your number two? I got Ottinger. Ooh, and LeBlanc. Connor Hellebuck. Oh, wow. So we're all... We're all in the regime for Connor Hellebuck here. Um, why, why, why Hellebuck at two? I, I would say I'll answer this question for you guys since I've been asking you guys so much. I would say for Hellebuck, he has he's probably gonna win. Or he won the Vesna, I believe. He has been carrying this Jets team a lot in many stretches, um, and I think that he's been all in all a great goalie. I know actually Carter's the Jets fan. I don't even know why I answered that. I should have Carter answer it. Carter, any thoughts on Hellebuck? Great goalie, great in the regular season. I don't know what happens in playoffs. Guy disappears. It's fair enough. Jack, you have Ottinger at two. Why are you so high on Ottinger? 
this guy just plays like a god against the Blackhawks every single game. Oh. I don't know. It's just it's so bad. I hate it. I hate playing the Stars. It's just because of him. So <laughs> that's that. You know, that's fair enough. All right, and number yeah. one, I have Igor Shesterkin, Carter, Silvos. Oh, Arthur Shilovs. No, it's it's, it's Igor Shesterkin and Jack. It's, it's Igor Shiesty. Yeah, I got Hellebuck at one. Ooh, and LeBlanc. I have Igor Shesterkin. Yeah, I think Shesterkin carried the Rangers. If it weren't for Shesterkin, I think the Rangers would be a borderline playoff team. Um, I'm not going to lie. I think that should sum it up for you guys perfectly. Um, I would even argue that in the last three seasons, he has been the best goalie in every single year that in, in that stretch. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but regardless, ooh, the block, what, what's that for? I do want to say Igor in the playoffs has also been the Rangers' best player of the past three seasons yes that's probably why i'm saying that um so we'll move into defensemen now since we got a long way to go number 10 i'm gonna let i'm gonna let carter start off here because i need to really balance i've been balancing between two players that i want to put this position are we doing defenseman okay carter who's your number 10 my number 10 i'm starting it off with devon taves jack i also have taves and LeBlanc? Dougie Hamilton. Ooh. So I have been. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Evan Bouchard at 10. I have been balancing between Tays and Bouchard on this list. I've been on and off. I think I'm gonna lean Bouchard, but I could go Tays either way. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Bouchard because yes, I think he had a really good year this year, but this year is really the only highlight of his career so far. The last couple of seasons, he's been all right, but this was the real breakout year from Bouchard this past year. I think he still warrants being at 10. Um, so shout out to Taze being outside my 10. LeBlanc, you're Dougie Hamilton? Why's that? Uh, I see him as the glue that holds that whole blue line together. You saw this season without Dougie Hamilton, how much that blue line kind of had growing pains without Dougie Hamilton in it. And, you know, he's, Two way he can put up put up the points you need and he can be solid on the back end. Yeah, I think you got a really good point there. Actually, when you look at it, they really were just terrible without him on the blue line. So that makes a lot of sense. Number nine, I have Josh Morrissey. Carter, who's your number nine? I should be number one, but that's okay. Uh I got Evan Bouchard. Jack? Number nine, I got Morrissey. And LeBlanc? Number nine, I have Devon Taves. All right, so we got the same consensus amount of players there, so nothing nothing too out of the ordinary. Number eight, I got Miro Heiskanen. Carter? <laughs> what was that? Carter? I don't know what the fuck happened to your mic when you said Miro, but it peaked like crazy and scared the fuck out of me. Oh, oops. Did that do All that right. for you guys too? Up, up no, update. I didn't hear it. Update, I do not need to go to bed anytime soon. I'll record for the next two hours. Uh, oh, okay. No, number uh number eight, I got Josh Norrissey. All right, Jack. Uh, I got I got um sorry, I have Heiskin in a number. Heiskin and Heiskin. Yeah. Heiskin and Heiskin. And Le and LeBlanc. Victor Hedman. Wow. Wow. LeBlanc, I gotta ask you first. Why are you so why are you lower on Hedman than usual than probably the other guys too? I feel he's taking a step back. I I guess that's true. I, I I mean, I guess it comes with age. Also, other young defenders have kind of like shot up the board and kind of proven, hey, they're probably better than Hedman. Hedman is an elite, like future Hall of Famer. But like, as we're talking like right now and the past couple of years, I think he's taken a step back. Yeah, I would say so. So we do. I will say this about Morrissey, since Carter has Morrissey at eight. If we were doing this based off of value of a defenseman as to a team, I feel like Morrissey would be higher. Would you agree, Carter? Uh, I mean, the only reason I'm not putting him at one is because you guys would clown me till the end of the century. Otherwise, like, I think, I think he's the best defenseman in the league. Like it's, 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 it's not even a, he's Norrissey for a reason. Like it's, fair enough. How come he's never won a Norris though? That's the real, question. Um, because he's from Winnipeg. Oh, I, I guess that's fair enough. When when you when you're not able to win something, say you're from Winnipeg. Uh, number seven, I have Rasmus Dahlin. Carter, 
Uh, I got Charlie McAvoy. Ooh, Jack. I got Darlene as well. Okay, and LeBlanc. You know, now that you say Darlene, I totally forgot about Rasmus Darlene. So, oh my gosh, I have Evan Bouchard. All right, Bouchard at seven. LeBlanc, you're. I think you're the highest on Bouchard. Why is that? Past two playoffs, he's lit it up. He's yes. when, when, when since Ekholm's come in with Bouchard, he's elevated his game to the next level, and I feel like there's nowhere really to go but up. That's fair. I I do agree with that. Um, number six, I have Charlie McAvoy, Carter. Number six, I got Rasmus Dahlin. All right, Jack. Adam Fox. Ooh, and LeBlanc. Charlie McAvoy. Okay, so I believe. Me and LeBlanc have McAvoy. Carter, Carter, who do you have again? I'm blanking. It's late at night. I'm tired. Darlene. Okay. Jack, why do you have Fox at six? Fox, he just has a great team around him. Um, and I think it's easy to, you know, kind of rack up points like that. Uh, still a great defender. Um, but yeah, just the same thing like I said about other guys. I I think I can find five better defenders. Okay. Um, number five, I have Victor Hedman. Carter? Number five, I got Miro Haskinen. All right, Jack. Five, I have Hedman. And LeBlanc? Five, I have Roman Yossi. Okay. All right, moving on. Number four, I have Adam Fox. Carter? Uh, Number four, I have Roman Yossi. Okay, Jack? Four, I got Bouchard. Ooh. And LeBlanc? Four, I have Miro Haskinen. So Bouchard at four. I was wrong about LeBlanc being high. Jack, why are you why are you so high? That sounded wrong. Why are you so high on Bouchard? LeBlanc, I'm not calling you <laughs> high. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not high right now, but I am high on Bouchard. Um, Bouchard, he's just great offensively. And I think he's just so crucial at Edmonton the Edmonton team this year, and he will be next year as well. I expect him to obviously go on a run. Um, but yeah, he he was just especially with Nurse falling off. I mean, he was just incredible, especially in the playoffs. So that's why I have him so high. Okay. Number three, moving into the top three, I have Roman Yossi. Carter? I got Hughes. Quinn, okay. not Luke. Yeah, Qu- Quinn Hughes, not Luke Hughes. He's not there yet. Jack? I got Yossi. And LeBlanc? I also have Quinn Hughes. Okay, so we're completely split here yet again. Um, Yeah, Um, honestly... You could honestly intertwine two and three. I'm not going to lie to you for my list. Uh, Number two, I have Quinn Hughes. Carter? I got Adam Fox. Jack? Number two, I got Quinn Hughes. And LeBlanc? Number two, I have Adam Fox. All right, so we're got two Adam Foxes, two Quinn Hugheses yet again. I don't don't know how we manage that. Uh, And number one should be straight across the board. I have Kel McCarr. Carter? I got Logan Stanley. Ah, I knew that was coming. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Kale McCarr. Who was coming? Kale McCarr. Jack? Yeah, Seth Jones. <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Kale McCarr. <laughs> Anthony Stolarz. LeBlanc? I got Montana's own Jay Sanders. No, oh, I got great. it. Oh, that's a great pick right there. <laughs> people would people would rage at you. for People would probably believe that you would think that, too. That's the craziest yeah. part. It's the craziest part about that. But, yeah, McCarr, we shouldn't really explain anything. He's the consensus. He's great. Um, Spectacular. Defenseman. Yeah, there's really nothing much else there. Uh, we are now basically halfway through. I gotta make a new zoom because Riverside doesn't work. Uh, and we will get into the top ten wingers up next. So we will continue with our top ten wingers. So I'll just get started, and then we'll go to Carter, Jack LeBlanc, as we've been doing. Uh, number ten, I have Kyle Connor. Carter, I also have Kyle Connor. All right, Jack, I also have Kyle Kyle Connor. Oh my God, LeBlanc. Jake Gensel. Oh, you're bullshit. Oh, uh, come on. All right, in the LeBlanc. streak. LeBlanc, oh, you're, the, you're the only outlier. Why do you got Jake Gensel? Jake Gensel might be the most one of the most underrated ring, wingers the past couple of years being overshadowed by Crosby. You see how he puts up. He put up four like back-to-back 40-goal seasons, and no one really notices. This year he didn't get 40 goals, but I think he's just – he's a dynamic player. He fits anywhere. Look at him after trade to Carolina. He excelled. In Pittsburgh, he excelled. He just – he screams excellence to me. Don't know what it is. I actually forgot Gensel on my list. LeBlanc, I'll ask you this question too. Do you have Connor on your list? My bad. 
<laughs> I knew it. Um, that that's fine. Um, number nine, I and I really, I really considered not putting him on this list and putting someone else over him. I have Mitch Marner at nine. Carter, I can't hear you, Carter. Motherfucker. All right, I got his teammate Willie Nylander. Okay, Jack. I got Mitch Marner. All right, and LeBlanc. I have Sam Reinhart. Ooh, wait, isn't Okay, never mind. I, I guess I'm bugging. Um, I o- okay. I almost put Reinhardt on my centers list. Um, good thing I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, I have Marner at nine. I don't. I I think Marner this past year, Marner didn't have as good of a year as he's had in previous years. I think Marner is very overrated. I think LeBlanc will agree with me on that. I oh God. I I still think he can be a top ten winger, but I'm not. I'm not in this. I'm not in the world where he's higher than that. Carter, you got Nylander at nine. Nylander had a really good year this past year. Um, I actually have him at number eight. Who do you got at number eight? I got the guy you have at number nine. Oh, I have Mitch Marner. Wow, Jack. I have Brock Besser. Ooh, and LeBlanc. Willie Nylander. Okay, so we all at so me and LeBlanc got Nylander. Um, Jack, you got Besser. What what are your thoughts on Besser? Why is he in your top ten here? I I do like Besser. Um, he's he's just a goal scorer, you know, and you know he's a good skater, good goal scorer. And I think he was a big part of that Vancouver team this year. Um, just just a solid player. Okay, I I like that a lot. Um, at number seven, we're at seven, right? I have Philip Forsberg, Carter. Number seven, I got Brad Marchand. Ooh, Jack. I have Brad Marchand as well. And LeBlanc? Or Kemi Panarin. Am I am I a little bit lower on Forsberg than you guys? Is that why? Yeah. LeBlanc, why do you got Panarin at seven? Red man. Red man? Um, I, I just feel like, yes, he's a he's an elite winner. He could could be higher on this list, but I think the guys are in front of him have either had better seasons or they're just a better player overall right now. That's fair. That's fair. I, I, I do think that. I thought Panarin had a, had a pretty decent year this past year. Um, I guess I'm a little bit lower on Forsberg than than or than a lot of you guys. I think Forsberg does bring value to the table, but I, I don't know. Uh, number six, I have Artemi Panarin. Carter? Number six, I got Jason Robertson. Ooh. Jack? Number six, I also have Jason Robertson. And LeBlanc? I also have Jason Robertson. Wow. Um, I hate to break it to you guys. I might have forgot Robertson. No, no. fucking way. Casual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you. I knew it was going to happen. I knew I was going to forget someone and look at that. It happened. Um, But, yeah, I have Panarin at six. I think Panarin was had a really good year this past year. Um, I think that he definitely... I feel like he performed better this past year than he has in previous years. But again, the performance in the playoffs still really isn't there. Um, number five, moving kind of swiftly through this, I have Matthew Kachuk. Carter? Mm, there's the guy I forgot on my list, too. Oh. That's okay. Um, I got a... Wait, are we on four? I don't know what we're on. Five. 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 I got Philip Forsberg. Okay. Jack? I have Panarin at five. And LeBlanc? I have Kirill Kaprizov. Hmm. I didn't forget Kaprizov. Um, I got Kachuk at five. I think you could argue him even higher, to be honest with you. I think Kachuk had a great year. He had a year this past year where if we did this last year, I feel like he'd be like number number two or number three on this list, to be honest. But this past year, Kachuk kind of – I don't I don't want to say he had a down year, but it felt like he took a step back. He had the percentages, like the shooting percentage, that would make you think he was trying and he was going to erupt, even in the playoffs too. Like he was still good. He just wasn't like the Kachuk we saw in 22-23 where he was wild in the playoffs. So, again, that is something that I thought about there. Number four, I have Kirill Kaprizov. Carter? Number four, I got Artemi Panarin. Jack? Before I have Caprizov as well. 
and LeBlanc. Uh, Fournette could. Yeah, Matthew, not Brady Kachuk. Sorry. Uh, he's he's so quick to jump the gun and say his sense players. Um, so LeBlanc, I believe Carter, did you say Kaprizov yet? No. Okay, so LeBlanc, you are the lowest person on Kaprizov. Why is that? I mean, he's only a spot lower. I'm not like criticizing you at all. <laughs> um, Kachuk playoffs, Kaprizov no playoffs. <laughs> I, 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 it, I guess it, that's it, true. I guess it's that's true. so close. Like, it's a little margin there. I feel Kachuk took a step back, but I think Kirill also take a, took a bit of a step back this year as well. I feel like yeah, he's he one of the, I feel like he's one of those few players that can make players around him better. Yeah. To be honest. I, I'll give Caprice off that. Um, number three, moving into the top three, I have Miko Rontanen. Carter? That's the guy oh! I forgot. Yeah. Oh, there we go. No, okay, you know what it is? I had I had two lists and then I transferred everything over and I was running through so much glitching on the notes app that I don't have them anymore. Oh, oh my god. I've never been so pissed off at myself in my life. <laughs> I am sorry for my wingers. Uh fuck, my three I got capris off. Okay. Jack? Yeah, pasta. Okay, and LeBlanc? Miko Rantanen. All right, so we're both we both got Ranton and we didn't forget Ranton. Um, I would say Rantanen is one of the more underrated players in the league. Uh, gets definitely overshadowed by McKinnon a little bit. I do think that he still is a very solid winger. Um, just not number two or number one, obviously. Number two, I have David Pasternak. Carter. Number two, I have David Pasternak. Jack. Number two, I have Sam Reinhardt. And LeBlanc? David Posternock. All right, so we all got the consensus besides Jack uh, for Posternock. Um, I think Pasta is very viable to that Bruins roster. I think that he does honestly kind of carry them this past year. You look at, like, the point margin, like it was, like, Posternock, like, 110 or something like that. And then Marshan had, like, what, like, 70 points after that. Jack, you're the only one with Reinhardt. What's what's the story with that? Why are you so high on Reinhardt? It's the goal scoring. Very true. It's incredible. Really Playoff good. performance incredible as well. It's very true. And finally, at number one, I have Nikita Kucherov. Carter? I got Kucherov. Jack? Kuch. And LeBlanc? Kuch. Yes, so Kucherov, best winger in the league. If it weren't for some of the years that he had injury-wise, I feel like he would be way higher in the point margin. Could honestly be like top five graded best player in the league. Not greatest of all time. I don't know where the hell I was going with that. Um, I mean, he could be. Who, who the hell knows? Um, so that leaves our wingers into what might be our most controversial list, our centers. So at number 10, I'll get started here. I have JT Miller. Carter? I got Sebastian Ajo. Jack? I have Elias Pettersson. Cody got and cold. LeBlanc? I also have Elias Pettersson. All right, I'll let you guys take the wheel here. What what What's with Pettersson being a little bit lower? Patterson has had one elite season. Other season, he's been okay, or he's been a bit rattled. I look at his playoff performance as well as a significant factor where he just didn't show up. Very, very that's very true. Actually, um, one famous thing that me and LeBlanc will remember is one of our friends said that the Canucks should trade Patterson after the really Black bad playoffs, Ops. and I was like, "What? Yeah, LeBlanc knows who we're talking about. Not going to say his name because we love him and respect but- him." But can't we'll never believe that to this day. Uh, number nine, I have Pedersen. Um, ironic that I have two Canucks together. Uh, Carter, number nine, I got Braden Point. Ooh. Um, and Jack, I got JT Miller. LeBlock, kind of ruffles ruffles some feathers here. I have Jack Hughes. You're not rather in feathers. I have Hughes higher. Um, I forgot point. That's probably why I have Hughes higher. Great. So that's you can add that to my list of guys I forgot. Um, I had Pedersen at nine, kind of the same reason for LeBlanc. I just thought I just thought he was better than Miller, to be honest. Um yeah. Uh number eight, I have Ajo. Jack or Carter. Jack, Carter, Carter, Jack, LeBlanc. Sorry. I have Ajo. <laughs> okay, I'm losing my mind. Carter. Me, Jack, I don't know who you want. Okay, uh, but I'm assuming it's me. I got Jack Hughes. Okay, and LeBlanc? I have Aho. All right, so we all got Aho. 
Um, I think Aho, I think Aho's still very underrated. Uh, for a lot of people, to give him credit to. I still, I still see him really low on some lists. I think that he brings a lot of value to that Hurricanes team. Without a doubt, the best player on that team the last couple of seasons. Um, I think that Aho definitely has some underratedness to him that should not go unnoticed. Number seven, I have Jack Hughes. Carter? Number seven, I got Elias Pedersen. Okay. Jack? Seven, I have Jack Hughes as well. All right. And LeBlanc? Number seven, I have Sidney Crosby. Ooh, so I'll ask you this question, LeBlanc. You had Hughes at nine. Why is that? I just feel like he's a little overrated. That's fair. I, I do think that there are some people that overrate him a little bit, um, like a tad bit. I don't think he's that overrated. Yeah, I, I think he's a top 10 center. I just don't think he's like – he'll hype him out to be this like 100-point guy. When he did, he did have a really, a really good year last year. Um, But this year, once again, he was in and out of the lineup. The year before that, he was – Promising, but it wasn't something like groundbreaking. I want to see more consistency from Jack Hughes. He's dealt with injuries a lot too, but that's not not his fault. But still, it doesn't mean that we should rank players lower than him because of that. Um, why do you have Crosby at seven? I think Crosby is one of the most underrated centers now. Not not Harry Parker, but just like right now, people just feel like you no, know, he's done. He's out of the dust when he's still playing. At a somewhat selkie level, still putting up over 35 goals a year. And yeah. still he makes everyone around him on his line better. Very true. He's one of the again, he's one of the few players that can do that. I would I would put him up there with Kaprizov and honestly McDavid and probably like McKinnon too. He's he's one of those guys who can make his linemates better. Um, number six, I have Alexander Barkov. Carter. Uh, I have Alexander Barkov as well. Jack. I have Alexander Barkov as well. And LeBlanc? I also have Alexander Barkov. Nice. Wow. Okay, That's look the first at that. One. For, first time that it's not number one where we sweep the whole thing. Yeah, Barkov, great defensive forward, great two-way guy, had a great playoffs. I think that I still – I there's some – he's a – how do I put this? For a long time, he was looked at as the most underrated player in the league. I'm not at that point now. Where I think that, um, I do think that some people underrate him still, but I still think he's properly rated at this point. In fact, he might even be a little bit overrated by some people. Uh, whatever you guys think about that. Number five, I have Sidney Crosby. Carter, I also have Sidney Crosby. Jack, you're I also there. have Sidney Crosby. All right. Well, the block's got to be a little outlier. So the block, who do you got? Braden Point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. LeBlanc, why are you so high on Braden Point, and why am I stupid to forget him in my top ten? Well, you're stupid, stupid because of these reasons right here. Oh, no. Uh, Great. Uh, I think Bra- Braden Point brings – he's just everything you want in a first-line center. Um, I feel like playing with Kucherov and Stamkos, he's learned from those. And, like, he's had, like, 90-point years. 90-point years where he's looked very good. Playoffs, he's been very good as well. I, I just – I don't know. I don't know if I have just like like a man crush on the on the guy, but like <laughs> he's just like he's everything I want in a first line center. He's everything that I do like. I love watching him play. That's, that's all I can really say. I, I I agree with that. I don't know how the hell I forgot him in my top five in my top ten. I feel like he should be in there. Uh, just makes me look all the more stupid. Um, we all have Crosby, so I won't even just go into that. Uh, number four, I have Austin Matthews, Jack or Carter. Yeah, you know what, Jack, go. Or I got Braden Point. Okay. Carter? I have Leon Dreisaitl. Ooh. And LeBlanc? I also have Leon Dreisaitl. Okay. So, the Matthews-Dreisaitl debate. What is it? You guys, you guys have Dreisaitl. I have Matthews. What's the reasoning for that? I'm, I mean, they play different styles of game. Like, Dreisaitl okay. is a big booming power forward who can score and he's a playmaker. Well, Matthews is just like pure goal scoring and defense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Number, we'll just get into number three. Number three, I have Leon Dreisaitl. Jack? Number three, I have Matthews and slash Dreisaitl. I could not pick one. <laughs> you mean, you mean, you mean you have, I, two, you have 11 t- Tied players. at number three. Tied at number three. Okay. All right. Ma- Matthews you know he, ha- he has 11 players. You know, I'll, I'll, you know what? Fine. I will I, let I it do have slide. A I will let yeah. it slide. Just it's, it's the only one. It's the only one. Carter? 
I have Nathan McKinnon. Ooh. And LeBlanc? Hit him with the four like Austin Matthews. All right. Jack, I got to ask, why is Dry Settle and Matthews tied at three? I just couldn't pick one. They're they're both like so even to me. I I just can't pick one. I know it's like a huge debate right now, but I just I don't know. I feel like early on I feel like early on, didn't we talk about this like in the first episode? Yeah, I feel like like we, didn't uh, we do like a top five player thing or something? They're just they're so even. Yeah. I I'll I'll let it slide for you just this once. Number two, I have Nathan McKinnon. Carter? Number two, I got Austin Matthews. Okay, Jack. Number two, I got McKinnon. And num and or and LeBlanc, not number one. LeBlanc. Nate Dog. All right. So we all got McKinnon. McKinnon, I think, I mean, if Mc, if number one didn't exist, um, I think that McKinnon would be I by have far Matthews, number one. Not all of you, but oh, I'm my kidding. apologies. Um, I, I sorry, Cart, I'll get to you. Yeah, Just forget we, about me. The three of us have McKinnon at number two. I think if McDavid didn't exist, um, uh, McKinnon would be mine number one by far carter why is matthews at two for you game changer i don't think we we've never seen a guy with a shot like austin matthews we probably never will he's already being talked about as probably going to get the goal scoring record he's the best goal scorer we've ever seen by far he changes the game with his shot how he changes the angles how he's able to walk around defenders he doesn't have the same speed as mckinnon or mcdavid by any means but his defensive side of his game has taken massive strides in the last two, three years, which is what we're grading him off of. And he's he almost he almost got 70. He's gotten 60 twice. Like he's he's the number two center in my eyes. Okay. Excuse me. And finally, at number one, I have Connor McDavid. Carter? Mark Shifley. Ah. Uh, no, it's it's McDavid. McDavid. Jack? Number one, I got McDavid. And LeBlanc? Yeah, McDavid always got a... Matty Beniers, that's a great pick. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) So, all right, before we... All right, so McDavid, great player. There's no questions. Broken records. It's been spectacular. There's nothing really going on there. Jack, Jack, I was talking to the guys this week, and I had a prediction that you were going to have Bedard in your top 10 centers. Where, 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 I have to ask you, where does Bedard lie on this? Bedard's, I would say, top 25 right now. Okay. I, I figured you'd be a little bit more like, well, I don't want to say biased, but I feel like you'd be a little well, bit watch more. Well, like, you have to watch him play every game. He, he's 18 and he's just so good already. It's, it's so cool. It's fair. It's fair. All right. So, yeah, that's, that's all we got for our four positions. Uh, Carter, are you going to depart us? Yeah. Um, okay. Can you send me? Will, can you send me your list then, so I can list it off. Yeah. I'll. T- uh, okay. Oh my. I don't. I don't have a mascot list. Um, oh. Then never mind. I was, Get out of here. I Goodbye. was. I was just. My last final words were gonna be. It doesn't matter what anyone's list is. If gritty it's is not Peters. number one, it is invalid. I hundred percent agree with what Carter's saying. All right, Carter. Thank right. you. He has work. Have a good night, boys. Life, thank Carter. you for having me. Uh, thank you to everyone who listened. Um. Yeah. Anyways, love all you guys. Take care. See ya, Carter. All right. So we'll get into our top ten mascots. Just a little bit of a fun list. I thought we do. Um. At number ten, I have Al the octopus. Is he a mascot? He doesn't wear clothes. No, he's not a mascot. He's what do you not mean, Al? He's literally he's in the building. He he's hangs the from the ceiling. Yeah, and. How can you make an octopus a mascot? That's the coolest I mean, concept I, ever. He's, he's an unofficial mascot. They never officially made him the mascot. Though. Well, you know, I do what I want. This is my show. No matter what, it, it, it's mine. Uh, Jack, who's your number 10? I got Bailey from the LA Kings. Oh, wow. Cool guy. Block? I got my dog, Sparto. Sparta Cat. Wow, you Sparta Cat at 10. Jeez. Number nine, I got no- number nine. And you think he'd be higher because he's so similar to my name. I got Nordy. Nordy at number nine for the Minnesota Wild. Jack? I got Nash from Nashville. LeBlanc? Wild Wing from the Anaheim Ducks. All right. Number eight, I got NJ Devil. Jack? I I I got SJ Sharky. All right. And LeBlanc? I got Finn from the Vancouver Canucks. Okay. Number seven, I have Sparky the Dragon from the Islanders. Jack? 
Tommy Hawk. Wow. Why are you so low on Hawk? Tommy. I don't know. T Tommy's cool. It's like we have Benny the Bull in Chicago, and nobody will ever be close to Benny the Bull because he's just so cool. And so, I feel like our expectations are just way too high for all the other mascots. That's fair enough. Fair enough. And LeBlanc? I originally had Tommy Hawk at this spot, then I switched him out. Uh, Blades the Bruin. Ooh. Oh, my God. I didn't. Never mind. Uh, number six, I have Sparta Cat. I'm a big fan of Sparta Cat. Um, Jack? I got Sparky the Dragon. And LeBlanc? SJ Sharky. All right. Number five, top five is when it starts getting real. Number five, I have Iceberg from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Jack? I got Carlton the Bear. I hate Carlton. Um, LeBlanc? <laughs> Uh, I have Slapshot from the Washington Capitals. Okay. Uh, number four, I have Tommy Hawk from the Blackhawks. Jack? Nice. I got Slapshot, Washington. And LeBlanc? I got Bailey from the LA Kings. All right. Number three, I have Slapshot, so I wasn't that far off from y'all. Jack? Yeah, Blades the Bruin. And LeBlanc? I have Yuppie. All right, yeah. number two, I have Yupi. Yupi such a classic. Two, what two I got Yupi. Who does? Who doesn't love a big, a, a big fat thing walking around? It, it, yeah. It's funny, but do you know the story about how he became the Habs mascot? Wasn't he the Expos mascot? The Expos mascot. Yeah. And there is a old clip of Tommy Lasorda throwing Yupi out of the ball game. Oh my he god! Go sleep on the dugout of the Dodgers. <laughs> um. Yeah, my number two is the NJ Devil. Ooh, and number one. I got gritty. Gritty. Uh, I got Bowie. No, I, it's They're boring. Gritty. I it's hate gritty. Bowie makes no sense at when all. I, when I went to, to see a game in Seattle, Bowie is scary. Like, he's actually terrifying in person. It makes no sense. You think they do, like, some kind of, like, pirate? They could do, like, a pirate. You know what no, what they should do? Just repaint Al the octopus. Yeah, yeah make him a Kraken. That's yeah. a great idea. All right, well, that, that that does it for our list. We do have one more thing, though, that we are going to start doing at the end of each Nordcast. I don't know if we want to do it for Nordblock. But at the end of each episode of the Nordcast, we ask the fans to a answer, to ask us some questions that we would answer live on the podcast. So the first one comes from Liam. He asks, what are our thoughts on the Archer Shilovs deal? I would say that I think it's like a what? A two-year deal at 850K? That's steel. I think like, it's a it is a steal. He didn't even get a mil in the playoffs. Uh, this next one comes from Ryan. He asked, and ironically, because LeBlanc's here, he asked, "What's next for the Sens? Make make the damn playoffs." Like I think I do think that uh, we need to just sign another like depth defenseman and maybe another like third liner. But I I think I think the rest of the holes will be filled by the youth. I see Clevin being that third defenseman, I see a guy that maybe like Crookshank or even Stephen Halliday getting a shot at that four for third line winger. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I think that those are the moves they need to make. This next one comes from Donovan, who asks, what more moves do you think Tampa needs to make to become a contender again? They need, to call, they need to call up Nashville and get Stan goes back. Yeah, to be honest. I mean, like, you, you, I feel like, well, being realistic, I feel like you need some depth. I, I was going to say, I think forward depth is their main issue yeah, at this point. They've got no depth at all. Six, their bottom six looks brutal. Yeah. You, look, you look at their scoring last year, like it was like Stamkos, Kucherov, Point, Hedman, and then it was just like a wasteland. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it just has, it's not great. So, yeah, I would say forward depth, I guess maybe a depth defenseman or something, but. Um, this next one comes from Brecken. He says, where does Frank Vetrano go, and does he even get traded this summer? So Vetrano's on Anaheim. Do we think Vetrano goes? Vetrano needs to be on a contender. I, I heard rumors of that. I, I don't. What is this contract like? This is why you wish oh, you had I a contract. Know. I think it's 3.6. Do you think he has another two years left? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that he could get moved. I don't know about where. I feel like the Rangers would be the number um, one place, I guess. I, I think they'll start the year with the Toronto on the Ducks roster. And then when Anaheim – if Anaheim does, does like, they make strides to contention, they won't trade him. But if they are booty cheeks again, I could see them deadline. Maybe a team like the Rangers. Maybe a team like Boston. 
or a team who needs winger help like the Tampa Bay Lightning could be in on his services. Yeah, I think that that's very possible. So going back to the last question, they could get someone like Vitrano to help out with the depth. Uh, this next one comes from Jack. He asked, not not that Jack. He asked, "What do the Islanders need to do to be a top ten team?" Oh, that's you're 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 asking. You need to pray. Get on it's your a process. Yeah. You're yeah, getting you need you're, like get younger. Get yeah. younger. I think getting rid of Pajot is a start. Um, oh my God. you need to solidify. I think the defense is fine, but you need to get another impact player in that forward core. Yeah, I would say so too. Maybe get a little bit younger as well. Um, I think that, yeah, they need another forward to really help out. I think they could be a top 10 team, to be honest. And this last one comes from <laughs> this last. So, so I did two. I did two. I did one on the Nordcast account. I did one on my main Instagram just because the Nordcast Instagram isn't that big. Um, my dad commented <laughs> something. He said, "He Paul, Paul, he said, why is your dad the coolest? <laughs> so I, He's a I, police I, officer, isn't he? Yeah, I would, I would That's just why cool. answer this question and say that uh, you are not cool. <laughs> <laughs> And I know he's not going to listen to this episode. So what the what what the heck? Listen, listen. Paul makes me feel safe at night knowing he's out there keeping the streets safe. That's <laughs> All right. right. All right. Yeah, I mean he's he's he scares me at night. Um. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and that's all for the questions. So if you want to ask a question and be featured at the end of each episode, be sure to follow at Nord Nordic ninety seven underscore ig or at Nordcast underscore. Um. That's all I got. That's all I got for this col- collab episode here. You guys got anything? Shout yeah, out nothing. Nord Block Pod. <laughs> Shout out Nord Block Pod. Shout out Nordcast. Uh, so, again, whenever I do these outros, it usually takes me a while. But since I have two freaking podcasts, this will take a little bit. So, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're watching, regardless, you'll be seeing this on my main channel. So, so subscribe, comment down below, say something nice. Um, if you are listening on either end... Uh, tell your friends, give us a good review, all that good stuff. If you want to follow the Nordcast Instagram, follow at Nordcast underscore. If you want to follow the Nord Block Pod Instagram, follow at Nord Block Pod. Um, if you want to follow the Nordcast TikTok, follow at Nordcast. If you want to follow the Nordcast Twitter, follow at Nordcast. Uh, if you want to check out LeBlock or Jack, their socials will be listed down below and all that good stuff. So, yeah, uh, thank you all for watching or listening, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Adios. Ow.